Okay, in previous versions of Windows, you had to have the Pro version to do remote assistance, or you have to download TeamViewer. Uh, but uh, in Windows 10, there is a little utility they've included that they haven't talked about. It's called uh, Quick Assist. And all you do is type it in down there at the uh, search bar, and you'll find the program, and you can launch it. Now, this will be launching it on the system that I'm sending assistance from. So you're going to be the person helping people out. So once it comes up, it explains what it is right here. So as it says here, it's what it's supposed to do, how it's supposed to help, uh, how you can one person can control the other person's computer. Now I'm going to do the give assistance here. So that means when I click on it, it's going to generate a code that you have to give to the other person. So they will, and that code is what they're going to enter to allow you to control their system. You can do that via email or whatever, but uh, most of the time I recommend you just call them up on the phone, have them fire up Quick Assist, and uh, give them that uh, digital code to type into that. So in order to see that, we're going to go over to the other system here, and we're going to launch uh, Quick Assist. So here we are on the red system, which is going to be receiving, and we're going to go Quick Assist here, and we're going to launch it. It's going to take a moment to come up. And we're going to click on the Get Assistance. And we click here, and we type in the code uh, that was generated by the person giving assistance. So let me go ahead and do that. OK, and then we go ahead and click on there. And it says Connecting. Now, meanwhile, uh, well, for what it does first, though, it warns you who's going to be helping you. And you click on that, and over here, after you click on the connect to do it, this system will move over to the next stage, which is actually controlling the system. Now, it may take a little bit of time, uh, but eventually it's going to find the other system, and it's going to launch the window where you're going to be controlling the other person's system. And uh, there we have it. Now, when it first comes up, it's not exactly where you might want to see it. So there's a couple things we can do. First of all, of course, we can just move it to where we want. Uh, but you also resize the window and get more of the desktop. But there's a little button up here near the top that says actual size. So if you click on that, you'll see that it, the size encompasses the entire uh, window. Now I'm going to shrink it down here a little bit to make it a little bit smaller so I can raise it up. And that gets my uh, taskbar away from their taskbar so I don't get confused with what I'm clicking on. Okay, meanwhile, back on the other system, uh, when that happens over there, the only thing they see here is at the top, they see a little bar saying that the remote assistance is on, or quick assist is on, and somebody else is in control of your system. Now looking at it from an external point, here's the two systems uh, next to each other. This is the system being controlled. And you'll see that the window on top of the blue system is the red system of the system, again, uh, being controlled. And if you click on something in one, you're actually controlling the uh, system on the other. Uh, for example, if you wanted to check out their settings, you click on Settings, and the Setting Windows comes up. And here's the Setting Window over here in the system that you're helping out. So just about anything you want to do on one system, you can do on the other. Uh, you just browse around, and that way it lets them see what you're doing. So we're going to go back to the system that's actually giving the help, okay, uh, in the window. Because whatever in this window, of course, the person is going to see on their own system. So, uh, let's take a look at what we can do here. Uh, in the case of uh, trying to help them do something like, uh, well, let's say their settings or anything, uh, we can go ahead down and click on the settings. So, remember, again, whatever you see, there's a slight lag between the two systems, uh, but they'll see it as well. So let's go ahead down there and click on settings and say, okay, I want to show you how to fix this problem with your system. So I'm going to click on the uh, settings down here. You know, I could launch a program or do anything else if they're having a problem with a program. Uh, but what's important to note is once you're here, what you can do with that. You can go in here and take a look at the settings and uh, make changes and all that. But there's a little bit of a utility built in as well that's very, very helpful. So let's say there's something that you want to show them that uh, may not be obvious, uh, it's easy to find. You want to click on something over here in the settings uh, that they can't, they don't understand what you're trying to do. Uh, so you may want to do something to um, draw attention to it. 
For example, at the bottom of this, there's this uh, link right here. It's not obvious. It's not a switch you turn on and off. You want to say, hey, click on that. Well, if you go up here to this little utility and you click on it, it's an annotation. You can actually draw on the screen. Now, theoretically, you can change colors, but I haven't been able to get it to do that. All I've been able to do is use the red. But if you look at that, you can draw and circle it. Uh, and uh, that way, you are able to draw and circle any area of the screen you want. Uh, to draw attention to it. If you click on the erase button, uh, it'll erase it. Uh, so anyways, uh, if we go down here, we can, uh, and sometimes it seems like it only will go counterclockwise, but for whatever the reason, you can draw lines, you can circle things uh, to draw a uh, person's attention to what you're trying to show them. Now, while you're in edit mode, you can't click on any buttons or open any windows. You have to exit the edit, edit mode, and that's up here in the upper right-hand corner. So you just click on exit and your annotations disappear and you can go back to going ahead and showing them uh, whatever they need to do to click on or close windows or, or whatever you need to do. And also you can, there's a other set of buttons up here, but one of them is where they can pause the session. And maybe they want to open up a private document or something they don't want you to see or close a window or, or do something else. So they can do that and then they can restart it, the session without uh, losing it and you're right back where you're at. Uh, you may have to resize the window again. Uh, but at least uh, you're still in that help session doing the right back where you uh, left off at. Lastly, you can't use the commands like control alt delete because it's going to control alt delete your own computer. Uh, so you can right click on things and get to menus and do those kind of things. That's no problem. Uh, but what you can do is you can bring up uh, the task manager on their system. So if I hit control alt delete, all you see here is on this system is that on where this black screen is at, you'll see that usual one that you get with the blue screen which says open task manager. But instead you just click on this little icon up here and there it is. There's their task manager instead of yours. You can go in here, you can launch uh, you know, programs by using the uh, run command there. I'll do that thing. But you can also do things like right click on the menu here, their menu, and uh, launch command prompt, you know, do some of those unusual things you might have to do to help them. So you, there's ways to get around the interface that uh, control alt delete and other commands that don't uh, affect their system but it would affect yours. So, uh, so there we are in the uh, command prompt. Now, one thing you might want to do is when you're in their systems, is warn them ahead that they might be able to see not only what's going on on the screen, but of course files they have. Uh, make sure that any personal files aren't, aren't going to show up because you have complete control of their system. Okay, uh, lastly, uh, it's basically now we're going to talk about how to end it. Now, either person can either pause or end it uh, by using the interface at, at the top. So uh, once we finish looking at their system and we're done doing whatever help, uh, doing whatever annotations we need to do to show them what to do, you simply can go up to the top menu up here and either pause or end the, uh, the uh, session. And when you click on the end session there, uh, either, again, either that person or yourself, and this is on the giving help side, if we end the session, uh, you'll see this uh, warning come up or say, uh, this is being shown on their side, and they can say yes, and there it is. Now, the session can be restarted by just clicking on here and going back into the session again, and the other person has to say yes again and uh, get them back in again. Uh, but, uh, once it's all done and you really want to uh, shut it down, again, there's several different ways to do it. Uh, you can, let me get this back to where we had it. We can click on the end session up here or just simply close the application or hit the stop button and we're done. So there we are, that's Quick Assist for Windows 10.